Break, you know what break it. This means break that it. it the I'm losing the weight. Break the arm. It's not about the arm. I don't care about got, the arm break. You got a world title shot. There is no Hello, Amnesling fans. In today's video, we will discuss all of the interesting highlights from the recent Engin Terzi's live stream. So, Engin's health is getting better. He was already going into a back and forth with Devon about the King's Move subject, which we, which he is really passionate about, as we already know. But initially, I thought that Devon is kind of drifting away from his goal of becoming the best 105 kg and 115 kg arm wrestler. But that is not true. When I come back, I am going to show people something they have never seen before. I am going to murder every single athlete in that light heavy and heavyweight division. Legalize the King's Move. So is that journey in those two classes going to be as easy for Devon as he is claiming it is going to be? Well, maybe yes and maybe not because in 115kg category, for sure Devon will not have much challenge. I mean, Ivan Matushenko is still there, David Dadikian is there, but apart from these two, there is no other worthy opponent for Devon. And even against these two, Devon will for sure be the heavy favorite. But I cannot say the same thing in the 105kg class because Dadikian, when he cuts down weight to 105, is probably going to lose, lose less strength than Devon Larratt. Same can be said for Ivan Mirtushenko as well. And for sure, same things can be said about Evgeny Prudnik, who is already down to that 105 kg class. He gave Devon a good match in 115, and he's for sure going to do that one more time in the 105 kg class. So the journey can be completed there, but not as easy as the 115 kg division. So after that, the King's Move subject. How did it really start? And before that, Levan Sagin actually also said that I don't think Devon is going to lose too much of strength when he cuts down weight to 115 and also 105 kg class. So this is what Levan thinks. I slightly disagree. 115 for sure. I think Devon can be as strong in the 115 kg division as he was when he faced Hermes and Levan Sagan Ashvili. Because against those two giants, he was basically weighing around 120 kilos and he can be at the same weight once he cuts down to 115, about 36 hours before the event. So he's basically going to be the same human being, just a couple of years older now. So the King's Move subject, what sparked this conversation that almost completely ruined the show? I think it was a super chat from a fan asking Devon when is the third Levan Sagan Ashvili match. So if we focus on Devon's last statement from that screenshot as well, legalize the King's move and Devon did not take a second to answer that question. I think he said it will happen or it can happen but Engin will have to legalize the King's move for that and Engin did not receive this comment well and after that it was a complete mess. He was constantly shouting and talking over Engin Terzi and all of the other arm wrestlers about how it should be legalized. At one point Devon said something completely weird. He said, Engin, this is a professional sport at a high level arm wrestling game. There should be no such thing as a foul. And obviously this pissed off Engin Terzi even more. So Engin said, I promise as long as I'm the organizer, it will always be a foul. And then later on the next day, he, he slept well, I'm hoping. And he woke up and he still couldn't get over this topic because he believes that whatever Devon says, many people will be taking that seriously and it is not good for the sport. So he created this community post saying that this thing will never be allowed at East versus West. If you're practicing that way, you're, you're in the wrong mindset and you will not be welcomed at East versus West. So, and he, he said that the referees as well, he'll, he'll seriously deal with the referees if they allow this kind of stuff at East versus West. He even called out Devon Lerett for saying that you told me that the rules at East versus West are perfect, nothing needs to be changed, but that was when you were strong enough to deal with all of the guys. Right now, you're losing weight, you're losing muscle mass, you're losing strength, and you're not sure if you can win anymore or not. That's why you want the rules to be changed in your favor. I think it's a really weird topic. I hope Devon does not win this battle of changing this rule set. I hope this battle doesn't even start because the arm wrestling fans and many other elite arm wrestlers have fought tooth and nail. They have fought really hard to get strong rules to almost force some of the organizers, except Engin Terzi, because Engin is already against that, to kind of have strict rules against this King's move. And finally, we got it. The fans are happy. They have stopped complaining about the King's move altogether, starting 2021 or 22, I think. And now Devon wants all of that effort from the fans to be erased. And I don't think it is going to just 
happen like that. I don't think the fans are going to let it slide. Devon will have to fight really hard to get things changed like that. And still, I don't think and I hope it won't change. Then the subject about Brian Shaw versus Levan Saganashvili. I think it was a question asking who can defeat Levan. And naturally, after having recently practiced with Brian Shaw, after having recently felt his strength, Devon one more time emphasized that Brian Shaw is in fact the person who will defeat Levan Saganashvili. He even said some stuff which I slightly agree with, but I also disagree with. Devon said Brian is bigger than Levan, agreed. He is stronger than Levan in terms of overall strength. Yes, agreed. Maybe not in the bench press though. He is smarter than Levan. We cannot know that at all. Both of them are champion in their own divisions. And to be a champion, you have to be smart. So not sure who is smarter. And more dedicated to arm wrestling than Levan's, Levan Sagan actually. Yes, Levan only competes once a year. He has his holidays. He shoots movies and TV shows. But still, he's practicing at least 3-4 months solid training for an arm wrestling match. And Brian Shaw has not trained for even two weeks for arm wrestling. Maybe two months. I was being too straight there. So how can he be more dedicated to arm wrestling already? He may be in the future, but right now, we do not have enough data to cover that. It's easy to recognize a champion. This guy is a champion through and through. I'm telling you, it's a problem. You won't know it for a couple of years, but it's a major problem for the super heavyweight division. I think this hype is... Nothing new, Devon Lett hyped Harry Wheels in a similar way, maybe not as high as being the overall number one guy in the world. But for sure, if you ask Devon Lett, day one, practicing against Larry, can Larry be the number one guy in 115 kg division in the future? He would have for sure said yes. And I don't think Larry can be that guy either. So I think this Brian Shaw hype is going to die soon, maybe in a couple of years. And honestly, I don't think Brian Shaw is going to train for arm wrestling for a couple of years. I'm not sure if he has the same financial incentives as some of the other sports to continue in arm wrestling. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is good. The cab is here. Vitali is the worst stylistic matchup for Devon. This is what Erwin said. He said that he's not saying he, Vitali can defeat Devon, but he's for sure a really, really difficult opponent being a tall top roller. Devon will have some serious difficulties to deal with Vitaly. And Devon used to agree with this, but right now he's saying, come on, Hermes, you know it's not like that. So Devon right now is really confident that he can beat Vitaly Lalitin. And the evidence is there. Vitaly versus Dave Chafee, Vitaly versus Hermes Gasparini, and then Devon against both of these arm wrestlers. It looks like a complete mismatch, but then once again, a taller top roller, which can cause some trouble to Devon Lalit. Travis Bajant was also on the show, and people really, really enjoyed the moments when Travis spoke. Hermes, talk shit to me now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he called out Hermes Gasparini. Basically, he said, Hermes, talk shit to me right now. You were talking shit when I was all weak. I was only commentating. But right now, I can defeat anyone. And he was feeling really, really confident. Before that, Travis said that he was offered a match against Gennady Quickvinia. Left arm, he agreed. But Gennady backed out by saying that there is not enough money in this world for anyone to convince me to fight against Travis Bajan, which, ob which obviously wasn't true. Engin clarified that Gennady said he needs more time to train for that. Jerry versus Kordecha, Levan Saginash really believes that he will be really shocked and surprised if Kordecha can defeat Jerry Cadret. So Jerry is a favorite in almost everyone's eyes. Hermes was also saying that people underestimate Jerry too much. So these were the interesting highlights. Please mention your thoughts in the comment section. Will Devon win this battle? to legalize under the table illegal king's move in a defensive position. Thanks for watching, like the video and subscribe.